going to be modeling up this corpin, and I've changed some of the dimensions just to uh, protect the innocent. But it really has some good geometry on it, and I thought it might be kind of useful. I'm going to do it a little bit different than just modeling the thing up. I'm going to model it in three different ways. Uh, the first way is probably the hardest way, and so I'm going to briefly just kind of go through that, and then I'll show you two really good ways to do it. So I'm going to kind of walk this through. Uh, I started out with a revolved and I went ahead and added all the material there. So the only good thing about this procedure in doing it is that I could have used this as my stock before I went in to go mill this uh, this thing off. So that, that would probably be the only pro to this, this entire thing. Uh, then I went in, actually just did a, uh, a, a pentagon here. And when I did the extrude, I did do this a little bit different. I said flip side to cut. So instead of it actually doing a cut on the inside, it cut the outside parts there. So that gives me the little nice section there. Then I came in and did a surface loft. So I created two sketches, a pentagon at the end of that, and then a pentagon on this surface face. And if I turn off the solid body, you can just see the lofted uh, surface section that I have. Uh, then from there, I've got a little bit of extra material where the revolve came around. And I need to create another surface in there to, uh, to cut that off. So I just drew a sketch. You can kind of see the little sketch. I drew a circle. I converted the entities of the uh, pentagon and then did a surface plane. So I just got a, a planar surface. Uh, once I'd done that, I went ahead and uh, did a surface knit, put them all together, and then I used, turned the body, the actual cut extrude back on, and we'll do a surface cut, and that gives me that, that feature, that shape. So there's actually a little bit easier way to do it. So let's go ahead and start from scratch and get that done. So I'm just going to start with a part inch template. And I want to start on the front plane. I'm grab my pencil. Just grab a line. And I'm just going to kind of draw up this little section here for my revolved piece. And then I'm going to add two other little sections right here. I'm going to select mode. We'll make those construction. And I'll go ahead and dimension them out. So we'll go to Smart Dimension. I'm going to dimension them to the uh, center line so that way they double. And we'll make this guy 4. Pick on that little point, make that 3.5. Uh, when I select that, it's going to double it. I'm going to hit Escape once, and that'll give me the, just the dimension for that, uh, that one little piece. So I'll do half inch. And then I'm going to dimension the entire length of this. So make that 3.5. This section right here. It's going to be 1.125. And the next section from there to there, it's going to be 2.25. So we're fully fully constrained. And I'm going to use this construction geometry a little bit later as I, as I go through this. So now I'm ready to go ahead and revolve. I'll go ahead and select my center line and hit OK. And I'm going to use that sketch again. So we'll go ahead and turn him on. And I'm going to select on this face. I'm going to do the lofted shape, so I need two profiles. Um, one's going to be on this face. So I'll start a new sketch. I'll just go to the uh, polygon command. I'm going to type in 5. I'll start at the origin. And I'll just pick a point out here somewhere. I'm going to select mode. Make this top uh, part uh, horizontal. And then I need to add a dimension for the circle. And I'll make it 2.75. And that's it for this sketch. So we'll finish out of the sketch. Uh, next, I need another section, but I can't sketch out in the middle of nowhere. So I need to go create a plane. So we'll go to Features, Reference, Geometry, Plane. And I'm going to select on my construction line and that little endpoint there. And so that way, it's normal. The plane is normal to that um, center line and has to go through that point. So it looks good. And then I just need to create a sketch on that plane. So I'll pick the plane, grab my pencil, Go ahead and get my polygon command again. Drag that on up. Go in select mode, make that horizontal, and add a dimension to the circle, and we'll make that two inches. So we'll finish out of the sketch. That gives me my two sketches. And then we'll just go to features. Go into a lofted boss or base. And make sure when you're selecting your lofted sections, you pick uh, fairly close to the same point. So that way the mapping points don't twist. Uh, if they do twist, you can drag them from one to the other. So you can see that doesn't look like what, what I want. So I'm going to drag it back. 
that looks good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and merge the result so we've got one solid body. And then we just need to finish this out. I'll sketch on the end of this. Do a new sketch. Convert the entities. So all five of those edges are now my uh, sketch. We'll go into extruded boss or base. And then all I have to do is select on the little endpoint. It'll automatically change to up to vertex. And I can hit OK. So the last little part, there is a little circular uh, face on the edge of that, but I'm not going to worry about that. I think you've pretty much got the way that we can create this geometry. So I'll turn a little sketch up, sketch off, do some more little cleanup, turn the plane off, and there's our, our part. Now these are pretty nice if I knew what those radius of those sketches were on the inside. Um, but what if I don't? What if I just know what the angle of this is compared to, you know, maybe the top plane or something? So I'm going to do this one just in a little bit different manner. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a, a new configuration. This is another way to do it. And I'm going to go ahead and suppress all these features. So we're back to kind of square one. Uh, I still have my little sketch out here, so I'll go ahead and turn him on. But I'm going to say that I have uh, different dimensions for this next, next section. So I'm going to sketch again on the front plane. Just going to grab the line command, draw a dimension down here, or a line, and then a horizontal line. Go into select mode. I want these to line up, so I'm going to hold down control, select on both those endpoints, make those vertical. I'm going to do the same thing here. So that way I'm still using this uh, original sketch for the, uh, the, the, the sections here. Uh, we'll go ahead and add a dimension. So we'll say, for instance, I have this is 20 degrees, and maybe from here to here is uh, 1 inch. So that fully defines these two, two line entities that I have out here. Uh, I am going to use surfaces. So we'll go right into surface, extrude, change this to got a mid plane, and I just need to drag them out uh, past the little part, uh, just past to where I have my faces correct. So I'll go ahead and say OK. That gives me my two faces. I can go ahead and turn off my first sketch there. And my next sketch, I need to find out, uh, in this case I've got a pentagon, so I've got five, uh, five different sides on there. So I'm going to select on that face, do a new sketch. I'm going to draw a little triangle out here. I'm going to select mode. I'm going to pick on that line, right click, select midpoint, hold down control, and I'll pick on the origin. And I'll make those those two lines or those two points vertical. So that way I'm creating some symmetry without having to do the symmetry constraint. Uh, however you want to do it, you can. Uh, last relationship is going to be between the top line. Hold down control and select on the circle, and we'll make those tangent. So the only thing that I have left that's uh, available is a dimension for my angle. So I'll select those two lines, we'll place that. And this is a pentagon, so it's 360 degrees divided by 5. So I hit enter, it'll calculate that for me. And I'm going to use these little edges right here to trim uh, my surface that I just created. And I don't really need this, so I'm going to change that to construction. And I'm going to use the same uh, feature I did just a little while ago. We're going to do an extruded surface. So just make sure that the extruded surface goes all the way through your initial surface. Uh, if you want to do something fancy, you could say up to vertex and select a vertex or an edge, however you want to do it. So I'll go ahead and say OK. It gives me two surface bodies out here. So under my surface bodies folder, you can see them. We'll go to the surfacing tab. I'll go to trim surface. And my trim tool is going to be the V surface and I want to keep this inside surface. So you'll notice it's going to trim it off at that angle. So I'll go ahead and say OK. Uh, I don't care to delete my surfaces. Usually I just turn them off. So this will surface extrude 2. Just select it and tell it to hide. So that's pretty much it. Next I need to uh, revolve that and just to show you what I'm doing with surfaces I'm going to turn off my solid body. We'll go into features just do a circular pattern. And I need to do a bodies to pattern here. And then I need an axis. So I'll go and turn on my temporary axes. And I'm not doing six. I'm going to do five of these. So you can see it looks pretty good. I'm going to turn off my temporary axis. And go ahead and hit OK. 
So you'll notice in the browser I've got surface bodies and I've got six of those. So now I just need to uh, pretty much create a solid body and combine the two. So on the surfaces tab, so we'll go into a planar surface and I just need to select on all these edges. And you see it's making a little planar surface. We get the little preview. Go ahead and say OK. Need to do the same thing off the back side. Now if I stitch them together, I could use uh, some techniques like uh, select open loop and stuff. But since I didn't knit them all together originally, then it's not going to find that loop. Um, so now I've got all my surfaces to create an enclosed volume. So I'll go ahead and knit them. Just do a big box around everything. And if it, close, if it creates a uh, solid volume, then it'll give you an option in the browser to form that solid. So I'll go ahead and say OK. Now you'll notice that I have two solid bodies. So I'll just turn my revolve back on. And we need to combine them. So I'll go to Insert Features, go into a Combine, and we're going to add the two together. That gives us one complete solid body, and we're ready to go from there. So this should give you three really good ways in which you can uh, create the geometry. Uh, some have pros and cons over the other ones, uh, and hopefully I've explained why that is. But depending on your geometry, hopefully this will give you some tools to create what you need. Thanks a lot, and model on.